What's going on everybody? So I recently just did a video where I walked through the foundation section of the Odin Project's curriculum and kind of just talk about what it has to offer. I'll link that up above if you haven't seen it yet. And in that video, I asked people if they would like me to go ahead and walk through the full stack JavaScript stuff or the full stack Ruby stuff. And it seems like a few people wanted me to do the JavaScript full stack section. So I'm gonna do that. If you wanna see the full stack Ruby on Rails stuff also, let me know in the comments and I'll consider making a video for that. Also, if you'd like me to check out any other curriculum for online courses to teach you how to code, let me know in the comments as well because I can make videos on that stuff too if people want me to do that. But with that said, I'm just gonna go ahead and start walking through what the full stack JavaScript section has to offer in the Odin project now. As you can see, they start you off with JavaScript right away in the full stack JavaScript curriculum. They don't start you off with HTML and CSS because they cover a lot of the basic HTML and CSS stuff in the foundation section and it's a prerequisite to starting the full stack stuff so if you come to the Odin project and you want to skip the foundation section just make sure that you at least go through it or watch the video that I mentioned because there's a lot of good stuff on there that will help you get through this portion of their curriculum so I wouldn't just skip foundations especially if you're a beginner maybe if you're experienced and you already know a lot of the stuff that they cover in that section then maybe you can go ahead and, and skip through it but you know, it's probably good to at least take a look. With that said, let's check out the JavaScript portion of the full stack JavaScript section of the Odin project. So as you can see here, they briefly cover an introduction. They tell you kind of how this course is going to work, which I think we should check that out because it seems pretty, you know, relevant to what I'm covering here. And as you can see, it's a brief introduction. They kind of tell you about JavaScript and how it's you know, moving most of the logic to the front end on the client side now and JavaScript is the future of the web. And then it kind of tells you of the path that you're going to choose here. And it, you know, they say that they have their Ruby program and their Ruby on Rails uh, program here and uh, foundations course and whatnot for you to kind of go check that stuff out first and, you know, not skip through stuff that might be beneficial for you. And it says that the last thing you'll do is a final project which integrates everything that you've learned in all the courses and curriculum. So like I said, you probably do wanna check out that foundation section because you're probably gonna to have to incorporate some of the stuff that you learned there for your final project. And for the format, they say that they're gonna cover a lot, but the course has been broken up into bite-sized lessons and they're accompanying projects. These projects will give you a chance to apply what you've learned and show you what you're capable of after a few of them, you will really start to get the hang of things. So with the Odin project and Free Code Camp, which I often mention these two resources a lot, it's project-based learning. So as you learn, they have you apply what you learned by building actual real projects that you have to do on your own. This is the best way to learn web development, software development. Project-based learning is gonna help you learn the fastest and you're gonna see the most progress if you do project-based curriculum. So just keep that in mind. Um, so let's just go back and see what else they have to offer here. So that covers the, the introduction and how the course is going to work. And then the first section of the JavaScript curriculum for the full stack JavaScript portion is going to be kind of organizing your JavaScript code and they cover objects and object constructors. And like I mentioned before, since it's project based learning, they're going to teach you some stuff here in the objects and the object constructors and then you're gonna apply it in the project for the library and so forth and so forth. And that's how you're gonna work through this curriculum. You're gonna learn some stuff and then you're gonna build some stuff. These projects are hard. These projects are not easy. These projects are gonna take you a long time. These projects should not be skipped. You shouldn't go through this stuff and not do the projects. I try to say that a lot because I know that people do that. I know that I used to do that. When I first started learning how to code, the projects were just too hard for me. So I would think that, hey, you know what? Let me go ahead and just keep reading some more and keep learning some more and then I'll come back to the projects. But what happens is then you start diverging from one course to another and you start doing different tutorials and you start watching different videos on stuff and then you kind of never get around to the project. So make sure that you try to follow this and work through the projects. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be tough. They have discords, they have, they have groups, they have 
forms. They have a lot of resources to help you get through them, to help you ask questions. And remember, you can always Google a lot of the stuff that you get stuck on. So don't get too hung up on how hard it is. Just try to keep working through it. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit that like button. It'll help me out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more content on me talking about learning how to code and how I became a self-taught programmer, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And then it continues on more about organizing your JavaScript code. It teaches you what classes are. It teaches you about ES6 modules. And then it has you build another project called the restaurant page. And then they cover object oriented print, uh, programming principles. And then they have you build a to-do list, which is going to be your biggest project um, for this first section. And you keep moving through this stuff and you're going to see how they cover a lot of stuff about JavaScript in the real world and stuff that you're going to be doing when you're a real developer and tools that you're going to be using, such as linters, dynamic user interface interactions, forms, webpack, and ES question mark. That probably means like ES5, ES6, and all the different um, types of JavaScript or ECMAScript as its real name is. Um, so that's what ES stands for is ECMAScript. Um, which was the original name for JavaScript. And you can see that there's many, many versions of ES6, 7, 8, 5. And then they have them listed by the release years and whatnot here, as you can see. If you want to learn more about that stuff, they provide some articles to kind of explain what all those things are and just to get you a little bit more familiarized with it. And then they talk about Babel, which is a tool that you can use to write modern JavaScript with all the cool features of the latest version of ES whatever and in your project so then it compiles down to regular old javascript which will help it be used in older browsers and have you not have to write super old style javascript in order to get it to work and support an old browser so we'll go back and that covers javascript in the real world then they talk about asynchronous javascript and apis um, they cover what JSON is, which is the JavaScript object notation. They cover what async programming is a little bit. They talk about working with APIs. They talk about async and await, and then they have you build a weather app project. A weather app project was one of the first things that I built. Um, it was one of the first first real projects that I was like really, really proud of. It wasn't like the first project I built, but it was like the first big one when I started learning and understanding what APIs were. And those are usually really fun. And you can really start off with like a basic weather widget. And once you build a basic weather app, you can start adding features to it. You can start making it, you know, your own and making it as robust as you want it to be. And, and really the sky's the limit. You can go crazy and build like the best weather app ever. I probably recommend just building the weather app you know, according to kind of what they tell you to do here and then moving on because there's a lot of stuff you're going to be learning. The next portion of the JavaScript section is going to cover React. And React is a very popular library slash framework. Um, and a lot of people use it. A lot of employers like it. It was built by Facebook. And they probably talk about a lot of that stuff in here. They talk about state and props, which is unique to React. Um, they talk about handling inputs and rendering lists, and then they have you uh, build a project, which is a CV application. I don't want to go into too much of these things because I want to keep this kind of like as a general overview. And there's so much stuff in the full stack curriculum that I'm already kind of feeling a little pressed for time. And I want to just move through this as much as possible. If you guys really want me to get into every single one of these modules that they have and every piece of this curriculum, let me know. And maybe I'll do like a quick walkthrough for this video and then I'll do a very in-depth one that talks about more of this stuff. But for the most part, I'm going to kind of just keep it moving. As you can see, they cover all the React stuff here and they have you build three projects in React. Now you're starting to see a trend. Now you're starting to see how this curriculum is set up and how they're going to be teaching you stuff and then making you implement things with what they teach you. You can see how many projects they have listed here. If you do all the projects as you walk through this curriculum, by the time you do get to building a portfolio, you're going to have so much stuff that you can put on it. It's going to be really good for you if you're self-teaching. And the structure that they have is really, really good. They, they cover getting a job and everything, and I'll show that towards the end of the video because that's 
further into the like last part of their curriculum for the full stack JavaScript section. And then they cover a little bit of testing JavaScript and like testing basics and they have you set up some practice testing and they have you do more testing and they, they have you build Battleship as a project, which is um, which sounds actually like a lot of fun. And then they talk about JavaScript in the back end and they talk about, um, you know, how to use uh, Ruby on Rails or um, backend as a service for your backend. Uh, and then they have you finish up the final project here. I'm not really sure what the final project is. Let's check it out real quick. So it seems like the final project is replicate your favorite website as close as possible. They want you to build Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, or whatever. And they want you to set up a, a GitHub repo and they want you to build this thing from scratch. As from what I can see, it seems like they really want you to get in there and just get in the nitty gritty of it and, and build something big, which, you know, building your own Pinterest or Facebook, I always found it funny because when you look at a lot of Udemy courses or things of that nature, they'll have you build like a, a Reddit clone or a Facebook clone or something like that. But when you're like an absolute beginner and you have to like even like try to think how you would build that, it's very, very hard. So when you do one of those courses on Udemy or whatnot as your very first like introduction to coding, it can be very intimidating. But here, by the time you get to that in the Odin project, you would have already done all the foundation section and you would have done all of the JavaScript curriculum, which would have taught you so much. So it, you see, it kind of eases you in. You're not just getting thrown into like this huge project right away, which is very unrealistic for someone who's just getting started. If you've gotten that far into that JavaScript section in the full stack JavaScript curriculum, you've probably already done a lot of what they cover and you're probably ready to build that stuff. So that's something that's really good about the Odin project. They're not gonna give you more than you can handle right away. Next, they're gonna cover HTML and CSS. And like I said earlier, the reason why they do the HTML and CSS after the JavaScript section in the full stack JavaScript curriculum is because they cover a lot of HTML and CSS in the foundation section under the basics. But here they're gonna cover more stuff and more HTML and more CSS stuff to get you a little bit more comfortable with it and get you probably building bigger applications and doing a lot more stuff in the UI with these two tools. So as you can see, they, they cover a lot of the HTML page structure and they talk about again how the course is gonna work. They're gonna talk about HTML basics and a lot of the stuff in here is they're gonna have you reading stuff, they're gonna have you going to other pages and other programs and other YouTube videos and other blog posts and they're gonna have you learning from multiple sources. They're not gonna just teach you everything in one place. They're not gonna provide you everything on the Odin Project. A lot of the stuff, they're gonna link you out to other places so you can learn from a lot of different resources, which is really cool because that's very real life how being a developer is you're not going to just go to one place you're going to pretty much have to google everything and you're going to learn from multiple blogs and stack overflow posts and videos and and you name it. it there's there's a lot to learn and a lot of places to learn from so after the html page structure section they're going to have you do displaying and inputting data and they talk about tables in HTML, they talk about ordered and unordered lists, they talk about forms and collecting data, and then they have you build an HTML form uh, as a project there, and then they work you into the CSS section. They talk about the CSS basics, they talk about the box model, they talk about floats and flexbox and grid and all of these different things that they cover in the free code camp curricular under the responsive web design. If you did the foundation section of the Odin project, you'll see that they would have directed you to go to free code camp and complete that entire section before moving forward, right when you start the Odin project as, as one of their first things you do for HTML and CSS. If you had already done that and you've worked through the foundation section, then you will already know what a lot of these things are. Again, I'm not going to get too much into the details of everything that they have you do here, but I just kind of want to walk you through what they have to offer. And I'm assuming that they're probably going to refer you to like the Flexbox section. They're going to tell you a little bit about what everything is, and then they're going to have you, you know, watch West Boss's tutorial on what the Flexbox and you know other other youtube videos and css tricks complete guide to flexbox is an awesome blog post that i always reference i mentioned that in my free code camp videos there's also a complete guide 
to grid from CSS tricks that's very awesome as well. Also, Wes Boss is an awesome uh, content creator. I'm a big fan of his. I used a lot of his stuff when I was learning how to code. He's been around for a while. I did his JavaScript 30 program, and I also picked up his React course way back when, and I really like Wes Boss. I'm glad that they used some of his curriculum in here. Um, and I'm just gonna keep moving through this. So then they, they cover a little bit of design and UX. UX stands for user experience, and they kind of teach you a little bit about fonts and typography, and then they probably just, you know, get your feet wet with a little bit of design. But, you know, front-end developers don't need to know too much design, but it is good for front-end developers to understand UX design. This is a full stack course, so I'm assuming that's why they're not getting too deep into design and UX because it is more full stack and not just devoted to front-end. Then the next thing they're gonna cover is a little bit of responsive design and talk about some CSS frameworks. They're probably gonna cover Bootstrap. Yep, there it is, there's Bootstrap. And they're gonna talk about Foundation, which is another uh, good CSS framework. There's a lot of other new ones out there as well. Um, and they're just gonna kind of tell you a little bit about all that and they're gonna you know, have you build some, some responsive websites and have you use Bootstrap as one of the projects. And then they're gonna get into more of the advanced stuff which is like animations and preprocessors like SAS and LESS and whatnot that you will be using. Um, more than likely if you work in like a production code base, you're probably gonna use a CSS preprocessor. SAS is more popular than LESS, but both of them are pretty good. I prefer SAS, I've worked with both. They're very similar, but SAS is, is the winner in my opinion. The next section of the full stack JavaScript stuff that they're gonna cover is gonna be Node.js. This is gonna be the backend JavaScript stuff. This is gonna be your server side JavaScript. This is gonna teach you a lot about handling data on the backend and saving stuff and probably CRUD functionality. And they're gonna have you set up Express, which is a very popular backend framework that many people use. If you've heard of the Merm stack, if you've heard of the Mean stack, that stands for Mongo Express Angular Node, or the Mern stack stands for uh, Mongo Express React and Node. And those are very, very popular. I do suggest that many beginners stick with one language. And if you want one language to rule them all and you're going web development, then JavaScript is your best friend because you can learn one language and one syntax and be able to handle your front end and your back end stuff all in one and you don't have to learn multiple languages and I think that's really good for beginners and, and that's why I suggest a full stack JavaScript curriculum over the Ruby on Rails stuff because it's just gonna be better to learn one language in my personal opinion. Once you get the hang of one language, feel free to learn more but when you're just getting started, it's probably best to stick with one and that's enough of that. So they cover Express, they talk about what Express is, they tell you um, some of the basics and the 101s and the 102s. And like I said, they're gonna get into CRUD functionality. CRUD stands for Create, Read, Update, Delete. And the NVC is Model View Controller. That's a very popular way of structuring an application. You have your model, you have your view and your controller. Your controller controls all the data. Your view is what the user sees and your model is how you want the data to be structured and whatnot. So they're gonna get into all of that. Again, this video is gonna be pretty long. I don't wanna click on every one of these things and get into every single detail here because this will just, it'll be, it'll be too much because there's so much stuff in the Odin project for you to learn. And you can see how many projects they have you build. If you've been following along this long, you'll see that it is an abundance of projects that they have you build. Like it is a lot of stuff you'll be building and you're not gonna get through this stuff like in a few days. This is gonna take you weeks and months to complete all this stuff. Don't think this is something that you're just gonna do overnight. Even if you're like an extreme personality type that thinks that they're gonna just crush it and get through all this stuff immediately like in a week, I don't believe it. If you do, you're not doing the projects. And if you are, you're probably just copying and pasting and not really trying to do them yourself. Um, let me see, then they cover some authentication and teach you how to handle, you know, users signing in and um, making sure that you handle passwords and whatnot. And, and then they have you build a project called members only, which I'm assuming that's what that's gonna be for to authenticate users on an application. Then they're gonna cover some more APIs. They covered APIs a little bit um, in the earlier JavaScript stuff, but now they're gonna probably get more into creating your own API 
and how an API works on the backend side of things and how you would store data and then render it as an API, which is like really good stuff. I did something like that recently. It actually was like a year and a half ago now with, with something where I created my own API and that was pretty, pretty fun to do. Um, and then they're going to have some testing for Express, and then they're going to have you build the final project, which is the Odin book. I don't even know what that is. It sounds very intimidating, but if you've gotten this far and you're in the Node.js portion of this curriculum, you're doing very well. So I wouldn't be scared if I were you. I'm scared because I haven't done it and I don't know what it entails. And it seems like it would be a lot after we've gone through all this stuff and we see what they have there. Then the last section is gonna be getting hired. And this is why I like the Odin project because it's structured and its purpose is to get you a software developer job. And many people do this because they want a job. Some people wanna create their own app, some people wanna start a startup, but a lot of people who wanna learn how to code want to get a job in software development. That's the reason why I did it and that's the reason why a lot of people do it and that's why I always recommend the Odin project or Free Code Camp because their main purpose is to set you up to get a job. The Free Code Camp also covers a lot of getting you hired and a lot of like job prep and interview prep and like all kinds of stuff as well. Both of these learning resources are really, really good and I highly recommend them. So then you see they prepare you for your job search. They have you build your personal website. They kind of just give you some tips on what a company wants and what you can do to prepare and how to get ready to look for a job. They talk about applying and interviewing for jobs. They have you build a resume. They walk you through all these things. They have you apply for web developer jobs. They have you do some interview and interview prep and they teach you how to like handle a job offer, which which is a really good skill to have, knowing what you're worth and knowing what you should be getting paid and knowing how to negotiate once you do get that first job offer is very important. And that's pretty much it. That is the full stack JavaScript section of the Odin project. I hope that wasn't too much. I hope that if you stuck around this long, it was valuable to you what I covered. If there's any way that I could have made this video better, let me know if you want me to do like a really in-depth, detailed, you know, full, fine tooth comb through all of this stuff, let me know and I'll consider making that. And that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, you know, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you want more tips and tricks on learning how to code and becoming a software developer. And thanks for watching.